The episode begins with a monologue from Henry, who tells us his story is an implausible one, but as he has lots and lots of time, he is going to tell us about it. We follow Henry as he enters the subway. He sits next to an attractive lady and notices she is Russian based on her chocolate. He then correctly guesses that she is a cello player and that she is going to her performance venue. The woman is very impressed by him and as she gets up she asks him to come to her performance and then to go out for drinks. He accepts her invitation but suddenly the train crashes killing everyone including Henry. The monologue continues and we see Henry is an unusual man which is to say he doesn't die. His story begins 200 years ago on a ship. He is a doctor examining a slave for a suspected disease. He concludes the man has only fever but the captain still orders his man to throw away the manual. Henry then refuses to let them do it and tries to stop them, but he is then killed and thrown in the water. Since then, every time Henry dies, he wakes up in a body of water fully naked. He remembers everything and feels every pain, but he can't ever die from any of it. Back to the present, Henry wakes up in the river, gets a cloth from a police station, and gets picked up by his old friend Abe and roommate, who is the only one that knows about Henry's condition. In the other side of town, Detective Joe Martinez is rushing out after a one-night stand. She then drives to the crash. It is reported the conductor had a heart attack which led to the crash, but to make sure she will have to go to the medical examiners and find out. Before she leaves, she finds an old watch which Henry carried and grabs it. Henry works for New York City Medical Examiner, and the two meet as Henry starts his examination on the conductor, and as she waits Henry notices her ring finger and tells her condolences for her husband's passing away. Joe is creeped out by his accurate guess, but before they can talk more, Henry reveals to her the conductor was killed by a poison, changing the case from an accident to a homicide. Henry then gets a call from a mysterious man who asks him how he survived the train crash. He then tells him he has been looking for someone like him for a long time. Henry tries to play dumb, but the man tells him he knows what he is and closes the phone. Extremely scared, Henry runs back to his home and tells Abe they need to leave the country, but Abe refuses and convinces him that they should just catch the guy. Henry has been experimented on because of his condition 173 years ago, and since then he doesn't trust people with his secret. Henry returns to his office and his co-worker Lucas gives him an envelope left by someone for him, and when he opens it he finds the picture of him and his former wife Abigail taken in March 1955. He then takes a blood sample of the conductor. Abe then injects him with it, and after returning from death he figures out the poison was aconite, a very dangerous poison that would kill in a minute. Back in the precinct, Joe is looking through a footage and sees Henry entering the train holding the old watch. She then brings him in for questioning, and he tells her he got out before anything happened. He then tells her if he was the killer, he would not have revealed the conductor's poison. Joe agrees with his logic and releases him for now, but puts him as the main suspect. Henry then goes back to his office, and he and Lucas search for the injection point. They then find it on the back of the ear, and with it find a fingerprint. Henry gives Joe the fingerprint and trace it to a man called Han whose wife died while trying to get onto a subway. The conductor was the same guy. Joe and Henry then go to Han's home and find the poisons. But before they can arrest him, he throws the poison at Joe and runs away. They continue to search the house and find a blueprint for the metro station. Hernie figures out Han is trying to use the poison as airborne attack so they rush into the station. Henry and Joe go to the roof searching for Han, but Joe gets shot by him from the back. Henry then tries to convince him to not do this, and when that doesn't work, he tries to take the gun, which only results in him getting shot. But as Han turns away to get his poison, Henry pushes him and they both fall from the building and die. Joe wakes up with Henry by her side. She tells him she thought she saw both of them jump, but he tells her it's just the morphine talking. Henry then gets a call from the mysterious man who reveals he is just like him. He then tells him they are soulmates before closing the phone. We are then taken back to a flashback to WW2. Henry is a soldier, and he meets Abigail who has just found an abandoned baby. We are then taken back to the present where it is revealed Abe is that baby who Henry raised as his own. In the last scene of the episode, a recovered Joe comes to Henry's home and asks him to join her for another case and gives him his watch back. Episode 2 The episode begins with a distressed woman named Vicky telling her cab driver to speed up and trying to call someone. She then abruptly tells the driver to stop in the middle of the bridge and then jumps off it, killing herself. The next day, Joe and her partner, Detective Mike, joins Henry for result of two dead people. One guy they taught was killed and Vicky taught to be a suicide. But to their surprise, Henry tells them the guy died in an accident, but Vicky was killed. Vicky trusts Henry's intuition, but LT. Joan orders her to let one go and actually work on confirmed murders. That night, Henry bikes to the bridge and as his guess, he finds two fingerprints from where Vicky jumped. 
He then tries to jump back to the road, but he is hit by a truck and killed. The truck driver immediately runs out after hearing the impact, but doesn't find anyone on the ground leaving him very confused. The next morning, Henry returns to the office and Lucas reveals to him he has found a skin under Vicky's fingers confirming his theory. He then tells him someone has left a gift on his desk and when Henry opens it he finds a note wrote by the mysterious man, reading that look painful refereeing about his death by the truck and sign your fan. Henry is very scared and upset by this as the man is clearly following him and knows everything about him but he doesn't know anything about the manual. He gives the note to Abe who traces the paper to be from a hotel that was closed since World War II. We are then taken to a brief flashback where Henry is writing with the same hotel paper to Abigail on why he is leaving her. But she runs after him on the street and convinces him to not leave her. Back to the present, Henry and Joe go to Vicky's campus where she worked as teacher's assistant. They then go to find Professor James. They are greeted by Paul. He tells them they were working on a codex of ancient Egypt writings. They then talk to the professor, who tells them he was going to release a paper with her but other than that he had no social friendship. He tells them he was in the opera with his wife the night of her death, which Joe finds weird as she didn't ask him for an alibi, but Henry was already suspicious and took a pen of James. They then run the DNA of the skin to the pen and find it a perfect match. James is then brought to custody and reveals he had an affair with her but that he broke it off after realizing he didn't want to waste a young woman's time. He believes she killed herself because he broke up with her, which no one buys except Henry. Henry figures the skin found in her nail was probably from sexual activities and goes back to find another skin in her teeth. He then gets the news the professor has committed suicide, but after examining it he figures out the professor was killed by a left-handed person. Joe and Mike then start watching through the security footage and see James's wife drunk coming into the campus. But Henry is with the real killer who is Paul. He confronts him and reveals that Paul was mad because he was not getting credit for the paper and Lord Vicky claiming he was going to commit suicide. But once she gets there to stop him, he killed her. With his plan known, Paul grabs Henry hostage with a knife and tries to escape. But Joe and Mike watch them on the security feed and cut Paul off. Joe then manages to shoot and kill Paul. That night, Henry gets a call from the mysterious man again. The man says he was intrigued why Henry cared about everything people crime love. He then says it's because Henry is a child as the man has lived 2,000 years. He then tells him to call him Adam, and when Henry asks to meet him, he responds they will in time. Episode 3 This episode begins with Abe opening their home slash antique shop. Henry then comes and tells him he has been studying his death and rebirth, and that he might have found a way to die. He explains some method of deaths last longer than others meaning he stays dead longer than others, implying if he finds the right way to die he might stay dead forever. Later that night we see a teenage kid stealing a briefcase from an old man named Bill. Bill then chases the kid down and catches him, but as he is beating him, he starts coughing blood and dies on the spot. The next morning Henry and Lucas check Bill's body and find he is ripped for a 67 year old man. And with further investigation, they find out the man had a 30-year-old body with a 100-year-old brain which has been highly damaged. Henry also finds some kind of shake Bill had ingested during that day. Joe has recovered the briefcase and when they open it they find a business card that says youth, vitality, vigor and $7,000. The two then go back to the crime scene to find out what happened and retrace his steps. Henry then sees a woman that doesn't look from the neighborhood coming out of her car and they follow her into an alley which leads them to a medical wellness center. There, they find Dr. Frederick on TV promising youth to people. They get to talk to him and he tells them he has a special shake which is approved by the FDA called Eterna. He explains this shake will make people stronger and younger and that they have not found any side effects. Henry then talks to the women and she tells him it's a miracle shake. He then swaps one sample from her purse and leaves. Joe also takes the print of Frederick and runs it through the system. In brief flashbacks we see Henry in 1906, his doctor friend had tuberculosis and since there was no cure then, he was trying everything from shock therapy to hydrotherapy. Henry tries to convince his friend they should only follow the science, but his friend has given up on science and almost kills himself taking miracle cures. Back to the present, Joe finds out Dr. Frederick is not actually a doctor and he is a person named Harold who had a wellness center in Florida, but closed it when two people died. The two then travel to Harold's home and they find him with his girlfriend throwing a pool party. They confront him about his previous endeavor and ask him to tell them the real doctor who was making Eterna. Harold agrees to tell them and goes back to his room to change clothes, but as they are waiting for him outside, they hear a loud sound and when they rush in the room, they find him dead. Back in the lab, Henry figures out that the thing that is killing the patients is prions from dead people's brains, which the makers are using to replace the real ingredients that are expensive. He then found out Lucas has lost two bodies recently, and through the city, 12 bodies. 
They trace the bodies to an EMT called Anton, who was also at the party. He confesses to making Eterna and killing Harold, but Henry figures out he also didn't make the Eterna by seeing his lack of knowledge. He then looks through the list of Eterna users and finds Abe's name. He rushes back home and asks Abe if he has used Eterna, and he responds he only went once and left even after meeting the female chemist. They then go back to the precinct and Abe describes her, and they match her to the sister of Anton. Abe while going back home sees her also boarding the subway and calls Henry and tells him. Abe then follows her to her next station. While Joe and Henry arrive at the place too, Henry then rushes to her direction and finds her standing on the edge of the rails. She tells him she didn't know Eterna was hurting people, and she is going to destroy the drug. She then tries to jump on the rail as a train is coming, but Henry jumps in and saves her in the nick of time. In the final scene of the episode, Henry takes Sabe to a skate park. Abe always wanted to ride a skateboard, and he is finally able to. Episode 4 The episode begins with one of the wealthiest New Yorkers, Gloria, having a ceremony in a museum. Gloria is 91 years old and mean to everyone we then follow her to a dark hallway with someone unknown following her. In the main gala we see her son Connor giving a speech about her, but few moments later she is found dead. Joe arrives at the scene and finds Lucas examining the body. She asks him where Henry is and he tells her he didn't want to come. The next morning we see Henry thinking about Gloria. A brief flashback appears and we see Henry and Gloria knew each other while Abigail was still alive. In a monologue he says he will never forget Gloria and the dead he owes her. Back to the present, Joe has arrived at the lab and asks Henry why he wasn't there, and he simply tells her he doesn't like going to the museum. While they are talking, Lucas meets a pretty reporter which he didn't know and accidentally tells her it is thought to be a murder. The news comes out the next day, and the mayor is pissed that this was told to be kept a secret after everything is found out. Lucas, knowing how much he messed up, writes up his resignation, but Henry stops him and tells him he will take the fall. Henry then goes into the lieutenant office and apologizes to her and Conrad, but Conrad doesn't take the apology and asks Henry to be removed from the case, to which the lieutenant agrees because Conrad is friends with the mayor. Joe still takes Henry to the crime scene even though he could autopsy the body. He starts analyzing the room and concludes Gloria was pushed off the stairs. She then tried to crawl away by fear and died at that spot. The security cameras reveal Gloria's granddaughter's boyfriend Lance also went to the dark hallway, so they get him in for interrogation. He tells them the reason he followed Gloria was because she didn't bless his engagement question to her granddaughter. Henry asks him if Gloria was acting strange, and he answers yes. He also reveals she said something about a burning smell which Henry immediately recognizes to be a drug reaction. He now believes someone did poison her first. When he goes to the lab to ask Lucas to do the autopsy, he tells him her body has been taken to the morgue. Henry then calls Abe, who has gone into her estate as an antique seller and asks him to take pictures of her medicine cabinet, but they still find nothing there. But he sees Conrad's hands shaking which he recognizes to be medicine, the exact medicine that poisoned Gloria. They get in Conrad for questioning because he didn't have a good relationship with his mother, but he reveals to them he has been taken off her will, and he would be the last person to kill her before she gets him back in the will. Shortly after, Lucas returns from a lunch break and he reveals he sneaked into the morgue and took an autopsy report, which now confirms Henry's theory. They also find out the will is going to her nurse, but she also had no reason to kill Gloria. We are taken to another flashback to when Henry brought Abigail to Gloria's party. Gloria notices he doesn't have a ring and confronts him about him. He gives her excuses, but she tells him he should waste time as she did with her true love. Back to the present, Joe and Henry go to the estate and go into Gloria's car where they find the epilepsy medicine that killed her. Joe asks who was with Gloria at that time, but Henry tells her Gloria killed herself. They then go back to the place she died and he explains Gloria wanted to kill herself because she only had a few months to live and wanted to go on her own. She planned to die in front of the person she loved. He showed them a painting in the museum from an unknown Argentinian painter. Gloria fell in love with him, but her husband threatened her so she gave in, but during her last minute she wanted to her time with the painting. But as she was going, she was stopped by Lance who took few minutes of her time, and the medicine kicked in before she could reach the painting. She fell down the stairs and crawled to the front of the building before taking her last breath. The next night, Henry comes to the museum. We are then taken to a flashback to when Henry decided to take Gloria's advice and finally proposed to Abigail. This helps us understand why he cared for Gloria episode 5. The episode begins with a boxer named Raul angrily training. Alejandro is 12 year old man. He asks him if there is any problem, but Raul doesn't tell him anything. Three days later, Raul is found in his apartment dead with a heroin needle stuck in his arm. Joe and Henry come to the crime scene, and after examining the body a little, Henry figures out Raul was murdered. He then does a full autopsy in his lab and he finds the needle didn't actually reach the bloodstream, proving Raul was killed before the heroin was stuck in him. 
Later that night, Lucas and Henry go to the apartment and search for a leftover heroin to find the batch. They hear rats moving around, so Henry tells Lucas to grab one of them for testing since rats have eaten some pots of dead raw in the three days. Henry then goes outside and is approached by a dealer. He asks him about raw and the guy reveals raw has been clean for years. He then tries to buy heroin but is caught by cops. Henry explains what he was doing to the lieutenant and even though she thought it was a stupid idea, she knows he is not buying heroin for his own use so she lets him free. When he gets back to the lab, Lucas gives him a ring that the rat ate of Raw. Joe and Henry then go to the rec center where Raw used to train and mentor other kids. They meet with Fabian tells them a real estate developer named Tommy was trying to buy the buildings in the neighborhood to tear them down and rebuild luxury real estate. But Raw was not happy with that so he was trying to stop him. The two then go into the neighborhood and ask bodega owner Sergio who tells them the same story about the shoes with Ruel and Tommy. They then go into a construction site owned by Tommy. Henry then notices the same materials on the floor found on Rawl's shoes which makes him think this is the murder area. Joe then calls Rawl's phone and Henry locates it buried in the ground. They then call the last number on the phone logs and Tommy's phone rings. He is then immediately taken into questioning but they don't get anything on him so he is let go. This makes Henry upset as he is pretty sure Tommy has done it. But Joe tells him people powerful like him don't get their hands dirty. Later that night, Joe comes up with another suspect named Lou, who works for Tommy. They then follow him that night and see him accepting an envelope from Tommy and dropping it off in the rec center. They then break in after he leaves and find the envelope that contains $50,000 in Fabian's locker. He is then brought in for questioning but he reveals he got the money to convince the neighborhood to sell since he is a very respected guy and running for city council. This proves bribery but not murder so they send Fabian with a wire to confront Tommy. But again he only confesses about the bribery. Henry then sees Alejandro outside and he tries to talk to him. But suddenly Alejandro runs after seeing someone in front of the bodega. Henry then runs back to Joe and tells them the kid knows who the killer is. They then go to search for the kid but only find his bike on the street. Mike goes to search Lou but doesn't find anything. This is when Henry remembers the bodega owner was also watching them. Joe and Henry break into the bodega and when they go into the basement, they find Sergio getting ready to kill Alejandro. Joe shouts stop and Sergio shoots his gun at them and runs away. Henry then chases him outside but when Sergio turns around and goes to shoot him he gets hit by an upcoming truck and dies. With the witness proof now dead, Tommy is not caught for the murder but they get him for the bribery where he will spend some time in prison for. Fabian also tells the community what happened and everyone refuses to sell. That night Henry invites Joe to dinner in his home where she asks how Henry and Abe meet and they tell her Henry's father was a friend of Abe and after he passed the two went into the antique business together. And the episode ends as they share stories.